Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And I'm going to open some really nice mail today. I'm so looking forward to it. And in, I'm just going to start with this package because in here is a card that um, basically led me to playing actively old school magic again. And this may sound kind of cryptic, but you know what? I'm first going to show you the card and then you probably know what I mean. Let me just check. Yeah, so I can just open it here, I guess. Very well packed. When there's one card that's packed so well, you know it's going to be a valuable one. And uh, this is a card from the Arabian Nights, by the way. And maybe it's good to know that when it comes to Arabian Nights, it's always been more of my brother's set. Like, I, I love Arabian Nights, don't get me wrong, but um, you know, he's got the complete set. Let's see if I can open this up. Yeah. Da -da -da -dum. Okay, it's in between here, I guess. It's very well packed. There we go. Look at this, look, it's on there. That's the name of the seller, Alex. Very nice guy, by the way. Um, he loves to collect cards with signatures on them. Hint, hint. So there is a signature on this card, actually. And there we go. So like I said, this was a card that kind of led me to playing old school again. Here, for the working class hero, the altijd vroeg wak wakker wordt. <laughs> Sweet. Have fun with the card. I love it, man. I like these added texts. Very nice, Alex. And there's a hint in here, a hint about what the card is. Think about it. So when I started Old School Magic, um, I guess I already played it, but the, the, I mean the modern way of playing Old School Magic, the way we play it now, it was actually discovered by my brother. He stumbled upon a website called and I'm not going to say it yet because I first want to show you the card. Here we have the card called Vakvak, Vakvak.se. And um, while well, I go and open this, and that's a card of, that's a, a website of the Swedish uh, old school community. Um, and they, I just, I can still recommend going to that page. It's still an interesting page to look at. First off, you, you get introduced to the Swedish old school rules. Whatever your your opinion about it is, it's it's quite a nice website to look at. Um, and also they show you a lot of archetypes, you know, what kind of decks you have in the Swedish old school format. Uh, and that really sold me when I saw all those beautiful deck pictures and I wanted to build my own deck. And here we go. Let's take a closer look at the card and what the card does. So I'll put a link in the comments below to uh, vakvak.se. It's really a website worth visiting. Here you go, wow, and let's just have a look at the front. Beautiful signature by Douglas Schuler. Look at that art. The island of Wakwak. A land and you can tap it to reduce target flying creatures power to zero. And yeah, of course, you know, a better alternative in a lot of situations is Maze of If, because Maze of If you can use that offensively as well to untap your creature. You can use it against any creature. But there are specific circumstances when Island of Wakwak is actually a better option. Um, you know, for example, if you have a Flyers deck yourself, then this is a great way to keep attacking with your Flyers because you can simply tap your Island of Wakwak and whenever they want to block with their Flyers, you can make the power of their Flyers go to zero. So I was thinking, for example, if you've got Phantasmal Forces, an Island of Wakwak can really make your Phantasmal Forces a lot stronger. You know, in that regard, because it only has one toughness, but that doesn't matter when all the potential blockers of your opponent are, you know, their power is turned to zero. So it, it just makes the uh, flyers of your opponent very weak in a combat scenario. So this is the island of Vakvak. Beautiful, beautiful copy. Let's put it back in the sleeve. Careful. Here we go. I'm going to put it here. Because we have more mail, and this is mail from Wouter. -na -na -na. And this is a card that I got um, 
purely for multiplayer games. I've recently made a nice playlist with all the multiplayer games I have on the channel. Some are EDH, some are Cube, some are um, Brothers Highlander, so there are different variations of how you can play multiplayer. Um, I'll, I'll put a link up here. Um, and yeah, this is really a card I bought with, with that in my, in my mind. So let's first take it out. Oh, there's some more cards in here. That is pretty cool. Wow. Oh, they're foreign cards. That is so sweet. Yeah, Wouter, I played against I played against Wouter on the channel a few times and we meet a lot during, of course, the uh, the old school tournaments here in the Netherlands. He's a great guy. One of the things I like about Wouter is that he usually tries to brew something, you know, creative. This is really nice. And actually, uh, Wouter, I don't have this one yet. I don't have the um, foreign version. So that is really sweet. Protection from red, which is nice. And it has banding. It's actually pretty solid. And just the casting cost is a pretty, it's, it's a little bit steep. If it would just be, you know, three to cast, it would be a different story. Look at that art. Look at the coloring of the foreign black bordered cards, just beautiful. We have another one. Ah, Thicket Basilisk. I actually have two of these and I have three of these. Wow. Wouter, that's so generous. Just to clarify, I didn't order these cards. Um, so, wow. Beautiful that you're sending them to me. I'm just, I love, I just love white bordered cards. You know, when the white border just still looks so crisp, like this. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Thank you, Wouter. Even more. Okay, so we've got, um, this is a wall of light, right? This one, and it has protection from black. I actually played um, these in my wall deck. They were in my sideboard. And yes, I have a wall deck. Multiple, actually. <laughs> they're all they're all equally bad. They're all equally bad. Um, so yeah, really cool. Very funky art. This one is three to cast, by the way, from Legends. A one five protection from black, and it's a wall. We're gonna put it there, and then the card that I I think this is the card that I actually bought. Here we go. Yes. Gauntlet of Chaos. Let me try to squeeze it out. Gauntlet of Chaos. Very cool. Very good condition. So it's five to cast. It's an artifact. And I just, I think the art's very funky. And um, then you can pay five and sacrifice Gauntlet of Chaos. Take control of target land, creature, or artifact. So you can choose then give former controller of that permanent control of a target permanent of the same type type under your control. You each control these permanents until the game ends. Gauntlet of Chaos does not untap, uh, sorry, does not tap or untap these permanents. Enchantments on traded permanents are destroyed. So it's it's actually really funny. It's, a, it's kind of a way as well to get it, enchantments out away from a creature. I never actually read that last part that enchantments on traded permanents are destroyed. That's quite interesting. What I want to use it for is in multiplayer games. I think they're just going to be a lot of fun. And I want to um, also just, I, I was thinking this is a really good card to kind of trade a basic land late game for a really good land. I mean, there are so many good lands in old school magic. Can you imagine trading, I don't know, a basic forest for a maze of if, right? Or that island of Wakwak that we just saw, or even better, a library of Alexandria, right? There are so many good cards. And also it's a great way to screw your opponent's mana base. And also it's a great way if you have a specific land walk ability to give your opponent that land, right? For example, in my black decks, I play a lot with swamp walk. So if I can just give them one of my swamps, that would be really funny. And of course, it's also a great tool to use to you know, trade an artifact or a creature. I think this is really a good card. The problem, of course, of this card is when you're talking about one v one games, is it's very expensive. It's five to cast. It's five and sack to use, right? So that makes it really tricky. 
But apart from that, it's um, it's a really good card. If you've got the mana, if it's late game, this can really be a game decider. And I think in multiplayer, it's even better for the simple reason that you've got more people at the table, you've got more targets to choose from. It's just really, really good. Anyway, thank you so much, Wouter, for, for these cards. And of course, these extra additions, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, these are going to add to my foreign black border collection that is slowly growing. And I am working on new foreign black border decks because I just like that so much. And also, thank you, Alex, man. Beautiful stuff. Really happy with my mail day. Um, thank you for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And now let's go to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.